Hi and welcome to a new section of this course, the frequently asked questions in the PMI RMP exam. In this section, I will walk you through 30 questions that appears frequently in the PMI RMP exam. So starting with set one, question number one, you are managing a mega construction project for your contracting organization. Two days before the foundation's work, the construction manager contacted you to let you know that there will be a delay in the concrete delivery. In this situation, what should you do as the project manager? So you are managing a construction project and just two days before you start the foundation's work, a construction manager contacted you and informed you that there will be a delay in concrete delivery. And this, and this means that there will be a delay in the foundation works. Well, how should you react as a project manager? Mitigate the risk, document the risk in the risk register, work around or implement contingency plan. So to think about the situation, put yourself in the place of the project manager. You received a call and they informed you that there is a delay in the concrete delivery. You will mitigate this risk how it was not identified earlier. It's an issue, it's not a risk. You cannot deal with this as a risk, it's a fact. So there is no probability of occurrence. The delay happened already. So you cannot mitigate the risk. You cannot even document the risk in the risk register. Okay. If the construction manager info informed you that he or she identified a risk or there might be a probability of, of concrete delay, that time the answer should be document the risk in the risk register. But they informed you that the delay happened. So you need to conduct a work around. You cannot implement a contingency plan because it's not a risk. You did not plan earlier for this uh, event. So the only valid option is work around. As the risk was not identified earlier and it occurred, the project manager should perform a work around. Work arounds can be defined as responses to unidentified risks or risks that were passively accepted. One of the Risk response strategies is the acceptance and the acceptance can, can be passive or active. So work arounds are tools or techniques we use for unidentified risks or passively accepted risks. Put simply, if any un unidentified risk occurs, you will manage it through a work around. If you have any identified risks you did not plan for, then you will use a work around to manage them as well if the risk occur. So the keyword of this question that there will be a delay. Okay, it's a fact, it's an issue. So you cannot deal with it as a risk. So options A, B and D will be skipped directly. The only valid option is the work arounds. Okay, you need to understand when should we apply the work arounds, how to deal with issues and how to deal with risks. Question number two, you are working with your project team and key stakeholders on risk management activities and you have completed a round of qualitative risk analysis. Okay, now you need to update the risk register with your findings so that you can communicate the results of this process to the project stakeholders, including the organizational senior management. In this scenario, which of the following is not an output resulting from this process? So indirectly, the question is asking about the key outputs of the perform qualitative risk analysis process. And the question uh, is, which of the following is not an output? So let's go through the options. The watch list, it is an output of the qualitative analysis. Also the risk categories. Prioritized list of quantified risks. No, we are still in the qualitative risk analysis. The prioritized list of quantified risks will be an output of the quantitative risk analysis. So option C is the right answer. Trends in qualitative risk analysis, it's an output as well. It's a risk register update resulting from the qualitative risk analysis process. Prioritized list of quantified risks is an output of the quantitative risk analysis process. Qualitative risk analysis tends to be more subjective. Okay, it focuses on identifying risks to measure both the likelihood of a specific risk event occurring during the project life cycle and the impact it will have on the overall schedule should it hit. The goal behind is to determine the severity. So you need to uh, understand the risk register updates and the risk report 
updates that occur after each risk management process. There will be a lot of questions regarding this topic. Question number three, you are the project manager of the Villa Compound project for your organization. You are about to start the qualitative risk analysis process and you need to determine the roles and responsibilities for conducting risk management activities. Where can you find this information? So you are in the middle of the project and you want to understand or you want to know who are responsible for the risk management activities in your project. To which of the following documents should you refer? The enterprise environmental factors, the risk register, risk management plan or staffing management plan, risk management activities, roles and responsibilities are part of the risk management plan. The risk management roles and responsibilities are contained in the risk management plan. This is where all the risk management process information is contained. In the most basic terms possible, a risk management plan can be defined as a document used by the project managers to identify potential risks to the project, estimate the impact and the probability of them happening, and then defining the responses. In the risk management plan, we will think in advance about all the risk management activities we will be conducting in the project. So this is a potential question for the exam. You need to understand and memorize the risk management plan key components. Question number four, your organization has a project that is expected to last for 22 months, but the customer would like the project completed in 18 months. You have worked on similar projects in the past and you believe that you could fast track the project and reach the 18 month deadline. Which of the following will increase when you fast track your project, the resources, the cost, the communications or the risks. So this question is an integration between the schedule management and the risk management. The uh, two popular techniques of compressing a schedule are the fast tracking and crashing. Okay. Keep in mind that fast tracking is about uh, conducting activities in parallel instead of finish to start whenever it's possible. And it usually increases the risk of the project while the crashing it's about adding resources to finish the project faster or to finish the activities earlier. It will add resources and cost. So for our question, it's option D. Fast tracking will increase the project risk. Crashing and fast tracking are scheduled comparison te compression techniques. Crashing usually will increase the project resources, while fast tracking requires performing activities in parallel, which will increase the project risks. In summary, the differences between fast tracking and crashing is that fast tracking involves the performance of activities in parallel, whereas crashing involves the addition of resources to a project. In fast tracking, there is an increased risk, whereas in crashing, there is an increased cost and resources. So keep in mind, crashing will increase resources and cost. Fast tracking will increase the project risk. Question number five. Shadi is managing a mega construction project and this project challenge is completing a high-tech governmental university in 18 months and hand it over to the university management by 11 of March 2021. Due to high importance of the project completion date, your risk manager performed a detailed Monte Carlo simulation for the project completion date and as a result of this technique, you had the table shown below. So the risk manager uh, conducted the Monte Carlo analysis technique as part of the perform quantitative risk analysis process. And this technique was conducted on the project duration, on the project schedule. The results of conducting this technique are shown in this table. You have discussed the results with the executive management and they requested to increase the confidence level of the required completion date to 75%. Based on this request, what is the required additional contingency reserves? Now, expect a typical question in the exam similar to this question, asking about the reserves, either budget reserves or duration reserves required to increase the confidence level of meeting the project objective. Either it was a completion date or a budgeted cost. Now, by looking at this table, 
the results of the Monte Carlo simulation will usually be represented in a table or in the graph of the Monte Carlo and we will have both examples in this section now in this table we have the probability of success okay shows shown as percentage and we have the completion date so how to read such table for example if I asked you what's the probability of completing the project by 1st of April you will look at the 1st of April you will find it here and your answer should be 80% and so on this is how you should read this table now back to our question the proposed or the planned completion date required by the university management is 11 of March by looking at the 11th of March the probability or the confidence level is 40% however the senior management is not satisfied with a 40% confidence level and required a confidence level of 75% now looking at the 75% it's March 27th 2021 how to determine the additional required contingency reserves it's the variance or the difference between the dates corresponding to the confidence levels which are the 40 percent and the 75 percent so just the difference between these two dates 27th of march and 11th of march will give you the required reserves the requested completion date by the university management is 11th of March with a confidence level as per the table of 40%. To increase the confidence level to 75%, the new date will be 27th of March. The difference between the two dates is 16 days. So the required contingency reserve to meet the senior management requirement is adding 16 days to the contingency reserve expect four to five questions about the confidence level calculations similar to this question question number six you have completed the process of developing options and actions to enhance opportunities and to reduce threats to project objectives as a professional risk manager what's your next step so now you are about to finish the process of developing options and actions to enhance opportunities and reduce threats this is done usually as part of the plan risk responses process the question is asking what's your next step what's after the plan risk responses process determine which risks may affect the project and document their characteristics no because this is done as part of the qualitative risk analysis and the qualitative risk analysis is previous to the plan risk responses process implement risk response plans track identified risks monitor residual risks identify new risks and evaluate risk process effectiveness this is the uh, correct answer of the question as this is happening as part of the implement risk responses process and monitor risks and both occur after we plan the risk responses define how to conduct risk management activities no this is part of the plan risk management process the first one assess the priority of identified risks using their probability of occurrence this is done as part of the qualitative risk analysis so option b plan risk responses is the process of developing options and actions to enhance opportunities and reduce threats to project objectives monitor risks is the process of tracking the implementation of risk response plans tracking identified risks monitoring the residual ones identifying new risks if any and evaluating the process effectiveness throughout the project all other options will take place prior to the plan risk responses process understand the sequence of conducting the risk management activities this is very important for the exam shadi is managing a project where he is calculating the expected monetary value during planning phase of the project the following represents the risk assessment results 20 percent probability of schedule delay with 20,000 us dollars cost impact 15% probability of cost overrun due to raw material price increase with 10,000 US dollars in addition to a good procurement deal that might save you 10,000 US dollars with a probability of 50%. What's the project expected monetary value? A very simple question direct to the point. You just need to determine the expected monetary value of each risk, give a negative sign for threats and a positive sign for opportunities do the sum this is the total expected monetary value in the situation of the question 
we have two threats and one opportunity so by applying the expected monetary value formula p by i it's 20,000 by 20 percent 10,000 by 15 percent and 10,000 by 50 percent giving a positive sign for the opportunity and the negative sign for the threat we will have negative 500 us dollars expect not less than two to three questions about the expected monetary value math question number eight shadi has identified a project risk that could injure the project team members he does not want to accept any risk where someone could become injured on this project so he decided to hire a professional vendor to complete this portion of the project work this situation is known as what type of risk response so there will be a lot of questions in the exam about the risk response strategies for the situation given in this question we transferred the risk the project manager don't want any of his team members to have the risk of injury so he hired a professional vendor to do this portion of the project he transferred the risk to this vendor this is a transference risk response strategy the project manager is transferring the risk to a professional vendor this transference risk response strategy risk transfer can be defined as a mechanism of risk management that involves the transfer of future risks from one person to another and one of the most common examples of risk management is when you purchase an insurance for your car this is a risk transference strategy you transferred the risk of having an accident to the insurance company this is a transference risk response strategy not five to seven even more than 10 questions will be about the risk response strategies question number nine you are the project manager of the new airport construction project in dubai and the project is very critical and high profile due to the project importance you assigned an experienced risk manager the risk manager started the risk management planning on the project and performed a monte carlo simulation with 500 runs for the project duration estimates and the results are shown in the table below according to this table what should be the average duration of the project given that the minimum acceptable confidence level of the executive management is 55 percent it's a long question yet it's very simple looking at this table you will have the monte carlo simulation results total project duration in months the number of times or the number of runs of the tool and this will not affect your answer and here is the percentage where the result was equal to the total project duration when the question is asking about the average duration of the project or the average budget of the project directly look at the 50 percent percentage okay however it's given in the question that the minimum acceptable confidence level of the executive management is 55 percent so we cannot look at the 50 percent as per the average duration we need to look at the 55 percent 55% is here, it's 18 months, the first option. At the 55 probability or confidence level, the duration is 18 months. Expect not less than three to five questions about the confidence level and the Monte Carlo simulation and the exam. Question number 10, again another question about the risk response strategies. You are the project manager in a construction company, which is one of the construction leaders in the Middle East. You have been asked to create a proposal for a construction project for a client. While studying the details of the project, you realized that there are several requirements within the procurement documents provided by the client that would eliminate your company from bidding on the construction project. So after analyzing the RFP or the procurement documents, you realize that your company does not have all the requirements to bid on this project. You propose to the management to create a partnership with a competitor company so that together you can bid on the construction project and qualify for the client's requirements. What risk response are you proposing to management? So it's very similar to the risk transference when dealing with threats. Here it's a sharing risk response strategy. We want to share this positive event. We want to share this opportunity with a third 
party. Sharing is a positive risk response, often seen through partnerships and teaming agreements to seize an opportunity. Sharing response is where two or more entities share a positive risk event to increase its probability or its impact.